Welcome back to the Global Business Report here on Horizon News. Our focus on Nigeria's aviation sector. Federal Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Mr. Festus Kayamo, SAN, says the Nigerian government is in contact with top French aircraft leasing firms to make it easier for Nigeria's private air operators in the aviation space to lease uh, Airbus aircraft. He made this announcement on his official X account, saying he had visited the Airbus headquarters in uh, Ossitani, France, uh, last week with a team of top government officials from Nigeria's aviation industry. Here is a clip uh, from him uh, there. Is the factory of the manufacturing giants, aircraft manufacturing giants, Airbus, in Toulouse, France. You can't see anything bigger than this. Now look at, this is the aircraft for Nigeria. This is the jack of all trade for Nigeria, the A20, A220 family, right? We have also this, okay, the A220, but this one is a Nigerian aircraft, what you see all the time in Nigeria. Now look at this, this is the mind-blowing one. This is the A350, okay? If you get into these aircraft, you will see heaven on earth in this aircraft. Right? Come on, come on. He says it's heaven on earth aircraft. All right, we head to the UK. Cindy Foster, principal managing partner of Vero Capital, joins us to discuss. Cindy, good to see you again. Happy New Year and good morning. Um, what did you make of the intentions of the minister in getting aircraft leases from Airbus and I guess their partners to Nigeria's aviation sector? Hi, um, Rotus. Thanks for having me. Um, just a, a point of clarification. He's not trying to get the leases directly from Airbus. He's trying to get Airbus aircraft from lessors. And um, what his intentions are, um, it's, it's a bit confusing because part of the roadmap was meant to be creating an aircraft leasing company for Nigeria. So he seems to have sidestepped the aircraft leasing company and has decided to, you know, arrange deals with aircraft aircraft lessors on behalf of Nigerian airlines. So it's a bit confusing as to what he was exactly trying to do. So if we're trying to make sense of it, does that mean the government would be providing a guarantee for the lessors to get those aircrafts over to Nigeria? Well, he hasn't specified in terms of financial guarantees. He's given reassurances um, in terms of repossession of assets, you know, if deals don't work out. Um, but it's, it's really unclear. I think he needs to go back to his roadmap and fully understand what the aviation industry needs and not be trying to do a sales job for Airbus. Gotcha. Um, I guess looking at the profit and cost levels for airlines in Nigeria, your customers are paying Naira for flights, but an airline is paying US dollars for leases. Mm. How do they come ahead? Can they come ahead in that scenario? It's incredibly difficult. Um, you know, the Naira is always chasing the dollar. Um, we've seen the Naira has been in free fall for the last sort of, you know, two years, really. Um, that free fall has increased over the last six months. And it just means that whatever you negotiate at the beginning of a contract, you're constantly having to, to look for um, additional money. It's very difficult to earn revenue in Naira and have all your costs in dollars, which is what, you know, leads to um, high fares in Nigeria, uh, whether it's domestic or whether it's international. This chasing of the dollar is, is problematic, but, you know, Nigeria doesn't uh, manufacture any of the components that are required um, for aircraft. And so uh, it's not really going to, to end anytime soon. Well, um, you, you preempted my next question, and thank you for doing that. So looking at Nigeria's imports, we're looking at Nigeria's trade figures in 2023, the highest category was machinery and transport equipment. It came in at about 12 trillion naira, and an exchange rate of 1,500, that's almost $9 billion, I think about 8.5 billion. In the, I guess, distant future, can Nigeria see a day where we're like Brazil, where we're manufacturing these parts? Uh, how do you think that would work out? Hmm. <laughs> manufacturing requires, you know, stable, um, you know, uh, infrastructure in terms of power. You need to be productive. You need to be competitive. I, I can't really see um, any situation in the imminent future where Nigeria can manufacture aircraft and be competitive on the international market. Um, the previous minister was talking about assembling aircraft, and we saw this current minister going to that same um, company, looking at the aircraft that was going to be assembled in Nigeria, and now he's looking at another you know, OEM, and he's um, you know, getting excited about bringing those aircraft into Nigeria. I 
I think it's all starting to look very confused. And I think we need to go back to basics. We need to look at the, the real issues in Nigeria. Um, it's all very well bringing um, aircraft, but when people are having to take out loans at 26% interest rates and the cost of capital is so high, it's not really solving the problem that really exists. Um, you know, we've already got um, a depletion of fleet that um, airlines have got. You know, there was a time when there was about 207, you know, aircraft, um, uh, you know, um, in Nigeria. Now there's about 40 aircraft flying around Nigeria. Um, it's bringing new aircraft isn't uh, the solution for that. We need a maintenance facility in Nigeria. We need to lower the cost of, you know, MRO services. We need to be able to um, decrease the time it takes to bring aircraft into service, whether it's leased or whether it's um, owned or whether it is maintained. We need policies that um, speed up the, the process of spare parts coming into the country, and we need to reduce those costs. We do not need all these trips overseas on what looks like a begging mission, looking for favor, or I don't know what it is. We need to get back to basics. We need to get back to work in Nigeria. What do you make of the social media reaction to the minister giving this enthusiastic tour of the company's products? There's a meme going around that he's been hired by Airbus to, to, <laughs> to promote their products. What, what do you make of that reaction? I was praying that you didn't ask me this question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Honestly, I, you know, I've got a lot of for what Festus Kayamo is trying to do, but I wish his people would hold back some of his enthusiasm. He's turning himself into an international laughing stock. He's turning Nigeria into an international laughing stock. He's now a meme. We don't need an aviation minister who is a meme. <laughs> Very true. Point, point well made. Um, the, you, you talked about ticket costs earlier. Nigerians have been lamenting in the, about the rise in the cost of tickets, but diesel, which of course Jet A1 is a derivative of, that's at all time highs now, about, above 1,500 naira per litre. We've got the exchange rate dynamic. Is it expected that ticket costs will be where they are right now? Oh, absolutely. Um, ticket costs will be that high because, you know, um, we are in an inflationary environment um, when it comes to all of the um, operating costs that relate to aviation. And um, you can't expect um, an airline to operate, um, you know, at at a loss leading price for too long a period. They do it, you know, uh, occasionally because they have to. But, you know, when you are in a, a low season period, which is what we currently are, um, they're trying to maximize whatever little revenue they can get so they can cover their costs of operations, so they can maintain the aircraft and, and still be operating safely, um, if not um, profitably, um, because it's debatable how profitable the aviation industry can possibly be at the moment in Nigeria. All right, so speaking of which, on that point, should we still focus on the national carrier or give that up? It, the national carrier is a, a conversation that keeps repeating itself across the African continent. Um, I don't think that the national carrier at the moment is necessarily going to solve all the problems. I think we do need increased capacity on international routes because we've got like 90 to 100 BASTA agreements that are not being utilized um, on the Nigerian side. Um, by increasing the international routes, we can bring down some of the international prices. And so it's very good that Air Peace are entering the Lagos London market imminently. Um, but I think we, we kind of like need to um, get back to the basics of, of aviation, uh, extend the operating hours of airports so the aircraft can be um, utilized more, which lowers your, your cost because you're able to spread your cost uh, um, across more frequencies. And so I think we need to get back to how aviation works. We need to remove some of the restrictive policies which um, don't allow the airlines to attract as much um, revenue as they possibly could. So we are constantly at a disadvantage. We need to get back to what can we do to put the Nigerian aviation industry into a more stable and solid footing. Right now, I think there's a lot of distractions by um, ministers and um, technocrats who seem to be more interested in flying around to every destination in the world, looking at things which they never come back and implement. So I think we need to get back to basics. 
Uh, final question for you, Cindy, before I let you go. It's uh, Women's Month. We've been celebrating uh, women of all professions. Uh, are there enough women in the aviation sector like your esteemed self? Briefly, if you can. <laughs> Well, um, for years, um, I've been um, one of the few in the room. There are more um, consultants coming out. There are more pilots. I love um, seeing female pilots. There's, there's always been fl um, female flight attendants. But when it comes to engineers, I love seeing the, the vibrancy of the, you know, um, aeronautical engineering, um, you know, environments. They've got their own professional associations in Nigeria and they're internationally connected. I love all that. I think, you know, you can never have have um, too many, um, you know, in terms of variety of people, but it's great. Um, since I started in aviation many years ago, there's definitely been an increase in female participation. Long may it continue. Amen to that. Cindy Foster, Principal Managing Partner at Avero Capital Partners, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you talking to us.